So, in today's video, we're looking at a deck that is essentially the husk of two decks jammed together, and that is Teamer Adventure and Teamer Ramp. Does it work? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, this is pretty good. But at the same time, I'm looking at both of them, and I'm just like, look how they massacred my boy! But, in this current balanced standard, is that enough? I guess we'll see. Now, as ever, if you enjoyed this video, why don't you sling it a like? If you really enjoyed the video, maybe you can give me a little sub! And if you really, really enjoyed the video, you can follow us on Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. Links are in the description. So essentially, this deck has three halves. You've got the Adventure half, the Ramp half, and the, I guess, Genesis Ultimatum payoff half, if you will. In addition to this, we've also got Obosh. Just so happens that all these cards let you play Obosh. Now, the cool thing about Obosh in this particular deck is you've got your great one drop being Innkeeper, it's always going to be that, but you can always play the Spike Field Hazard or play a 1 1 with Heart's Desire. Then for two drops, you've still got like a Petty Theft or a Stomp if you need to. And then with three drops, you think you can actually play your guys, play the Cultivate, you can use Beanstalk Giants, uh, Feral Footsteps. So the the Obosh cost doesn't really affect this deck in any way, really. This deck is not Teamer Adventure, and this deck is also not Teamer, like, Genesis Ultimatum Ramp, because realistically, if we were gonna play the Ramp version, I think you'd have to play Goose, probably play, like, another Cultivate-type thing. You'd probably play the two-mana Hedron land, and it's also, like, a Mana Dork thing. However, the benefit of this particular build, I guess we could say, is you can play out of kind of more situations that the ultimate, like the just straight up ramp version could play. Like, yeah, the ramp version is going to be able to play ultimate and quicker, but ultimately you lack a lot of the flexibility that the adventure cards give you. So, realistically, this deck is more, right, can I survive until turn 5, turn 7 at the latest to get off an ultimatum? And basically, for the most part, the answer's yes. Really, the, the biggest issue with this deck is just not drawing Genesis Ultimatum. Uh, every, every game you draw this and you play it, you win. Uh, otherwise, you just kind of don't win because the Adventure deck is good, don't get me wrong. But really, what set it apart was having the Lucky Clover to get like mega, mega value. So you really don't have that in this version. Perhaps if you feel so inclined, you could also play the Fae of Wishes instead of the Great Henge, or you can maybe cut back on a couple of lands, because this version does play 30 lands, so yeah, you could probably put in Fae of Wishes or whatever, perhaps Search Genesis Ultimate. Not only this, having uh, no Escape to the Wilds hurts the deck as well, so really, as you really do have like, the shell of both of these teamer decks just mashed into one and then fling an Obosh in. But ultimately, it does kind of work, because this standard is particularly balanced, com like, <laughs> compared to the last year of standard we have. So, ultimately, this is the best we're going to have, and as much as the deck is worse, it's technically a good sign, you know? But anyway, enough rambling, let's get into the games. So, we're keeping this hand, because as far as I'm concerned, right, we've got, we're setting up our lands here, we've got the Cultivate, and we've got enough removal, Especially now, luckily we're against black, right, so probably rogues, that's what I was assuming. Like, if they put down a black land, I'm like, right, it's, it's rogues, it's, it's never going to be anything else, realistically speaking. I mean, sometimes it is, but most of the time they're putting out wee guys, right, so you don't need to worry. So cool, all my stomps and that are live, so we're totally fine. This is the kind of perfect example hand, honestly, we're pretty lucky that we drew the Genesis Ultimatum before you got the chance to mill it. But ultimately, the good news is, is that we can easily work towards the Genesis Ultimatum, with this kind of hand, and really, when you're playing this deck, that is your main priority. If you have the Genesis Ultimatum, either find it or make sure you ramp to it as quickly as possible. All your ramp cards really do take priority, because there's been a number of games where, somehow, despite having 30 land, I have managed to, like, just kind of grind to a halt. I don't know how that's possible, right? I don't, I don't get it, but it is possible. Now, when you're playing against rogues, you kind of need to hope that they're, like, tapped out. Because if they counter your Genesis Ultimate, you're fucked, right? It's just, it is what it is. So, you kind of need to play around that. But if you can play around that, you're fine. And with me, you know, I've got the stomps and stuff here. 
you can perhaps like bait out counters like on you know when you've got six lands you play the seventh and then you can like they'll counter the removal and then end up tapped out and then you can just play the genesis ultimatum because as soon as you play it you basically win unless you get like five lands which is unlikely it doesn't generally happen it can happen but generally speaking you're gonna be fine <laughs> So I think this rogues player just having like a, a bad time, if I'm being totally honest. <laughs> like, yeah, cool, he got the, the sword and thought thief and stuff and he's, he's poking with her ankle, but ultimately I don't really care too much at this stage. Eyes on the prize, we want that Genesis ultimatum out. Now, the cool thing was is that he did manage to dodge the... Um, the the one damage from the land uh, by playing the Sword and Thought Thief. So that was a pretty big brain of him, honestly. Like, not, not gonna lie. Credit where credit's due. But I'm just like, right, as long as I'm not taking too much damage, I'm fine here. And obviously, I can fire at the Brazen Bar. Honestly, with the, this Brazen Bar, I wasn't really too worried about him. Like, see, this is exactly what I'm saying. I didn't really care if he countered it. I was kind of just like, well, if he counters it, he counters it. Who cares? Because... Presumably, he doesn't have another one, right? That that was the assumption, and you just you have to make that assumption. Like, here's the rule, right? If you can't play around something, just assume they don't have it. Like, that's just how it works, by the way. <laughs> so then you play the Gen Salt, mate, and you just win from there. Now, if if this was just the straight up ramp version, it's hard to really definitively say if you would have absolutely have beaten me or I would have won even easier but ultimately we did win as you can see sticking to the course as Rudy says stay the course you just want to play your play your lands play the Genesis the other stuff is just padding around it <laughs> now he did play an into the story but it just wasn't enough he wasn't able to generate enough advantage to come back from that the Genesis ultimate is just too crazy Honestly, I think if you get a hand with Genesis let me just keep it, like, you just keep it. Because you really don't want to have to be, like, sifting through your deck. Which is why I was saying, saying earlier, realistically in this deck, you could probably play the Fair Wishes, and it might actually set you up for a little bit better. It allows you to, like, main deck board wipes if you need to. And as you're playing this deck, a little bit more of a mid rangey type thing, you can kind of get away with it a bit more. So we're up against Rakdos in this matchup, and, uh... Rakdos is actually a, a matchup that you have an extremely, like, good matchup against. <laughs> it's a good matchup for the deck, there's a better way of saying it. And the reason for that is, lots of small guys that your stomps are active on, as well as the deck isn't especially fast, so you can get away with kind of taking your time, getting to where you need to be, setting up a really good ultimatum. So, not a lot happens currently. He's just kind of, he's just doing his thing. He's milling himself a little bit. But ultimately, our hand is pretty good. Look at that. We've got ourselves an ultimatum again. We've got ourselves a cultivate again. We've got a few more lands to pad it out. And the cool thing about the, the adventure, guys, is that it gets around having so many lands in your deck. Like, you, you might, you know, you get one use out of it, but then you've also got a guy, so you, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of good, like, you never really seem, like, the 30 lands doesn't really feel like an issue. And again, you know, if he's, uh, using his cards on you, look, look at, look at this, like, how many more cards we've got than this guy already. That's pretty crazy. Now, it's not totally over for him at this stage, you know, you could easily come back from this, but ultimately, we're pretty close to an ultimatum, probably next turn and at that stage like I, there's really nothing he's able to do so i'm just trying to work out just make sure you don't fuck your land drops up like you don't want to get a turn eight ultimatum by mistake now in this case it's kind of up in the air whether you block that or not but it's the logic being i'm able to ultimate him next turn regardless and getting one ones is probably going to be difficult from here on in so keep it up that way my uh Love struck beasts are actually going to be live. There we go. Ultimate and bang dead. Like, how you can't win from this. That's a lot of Damahe right there. And then, if it comes to it, we can just play two Love struck beasts next turn and just immediately kill him. So, it, it's, it's not a good look for this guy. It really isn't. 
Now, another thing is if you're playing Fair Wishes, you could also then play like... Oh, no, no, you can't. I was going to say you could put um, uh, Scavenger News in the side, but I guess you could just put Tormont's Crypt or something in, like, same thing. So he had the removal for the, um, the Terror of the Peaks, but ultimately I don't, it really doesn't matter. He did manage to, like, hold out an amount of time though, like, to be fair, credit to him. But, a bit, but he knows this just isn't enough. Uh, swing in and if, like, anything hits face, it's just, it's just this game. But oh, he trying. Let's be fair, he do be trying. So as much as I can, I, I think he played Terror of the Peaks, then he just quits. But nah, he's actually he's straight up like waiting for me to attack him. The balls on this kid is crazy. But as you can see, like, the deck just generates, like, so much field pressure. Even if he was to play a Croxa, it just generally wouldn't matter. But again, you know, as you saw, we're just sticking to the game plan. Just get the lands for the ultimatum out ASAP. Because all the games that I've lost, I've just not been able to cast the ultimatum. And the weird thing is, this is a lot of the times. <laughs> the games that I win, it's like, I'm only winning because of ultimatum, ultimately. <laughs> So it just goes to show you the power of that card, like it's very, very good. But it's just not enough. There you go, game over. So this hand is like, okay. I'm not sure, I can't remember if I mull this one. My initial thoughts would be to mull this hand ultimately. Can't really play the boat, can't really play anything aside from the Love Shock Beast slowly. Now, with the deck that I'm going to make a video on uh, later on, see, yeah, I'm, I'm mulling this. This hand, far, far better. Way more balanced. This, uh, this hand also has the same advantages of the old hand, whereas if I draw one more land, I'm then able to play the, um, the Great Henge. And there we go, there's a land for that. So we're playing Henge on curve, hopefully, and that's, like, amazing. Plus, this hand also had some red mana in it, which allows us to... You know, have a live Bone Crusher Giant, which is also super relevant, as you can see. So I think we're up against Rogues again, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's fine to have, like, more than one Rogues match in these kind of videos, because ultimately you do come up against Rogues quite a lot. Which is sort of the thing, like, again, the meta is still balanced around can your deck beat Rogues, because if it can, it can pretty much deal with anything else. But here we go, Henge out, and honestly, man, Henge is... Probably one of the best cards this format. I mean, probably, it just straight up is. Like, if your deck can take advantage of Great Henge, as soon as it hits board, like, you win. Now, did get countered, which is... Which obviously sucks. That sucks so damn much. <laughs> but it's fine, it's fine. We, we'll deal with it, we'll deal with it. So, he does beat us down with this uh, Skyclave Apparition for, like, a little bit. But that's okay, we take good care of it later on. Now, no Genesis Ultimatum as of yet, so that's kind of disappointing. As you see, this is one of those games where it just ends up being like a little bit slower. Now, if he doesn't out the Terror of the Peaks, then, you know, we're, we're in a really solid position. The problem with Terror of the Peaks is that it is just, it is just removal bait, like, as soon as it's on board, they do everything in their power to take care of it, and that's Kind of really shit and horrible, honestly. <laughs> See, I, I just, there we go. So, as it turns out, this guy isn't playing rogues. He's playing kicker, which blew me away. I was like, Jesus Christ. After trying the kicker decks, I mean, I've seen a lot of videos where they're like, yeah, the kicker deck's really good. It's not. It's not good. It's not as bad as you think it would be, but it's also definitely not good. Obviously, the Inter Inter the Royal just bouncing the Terror of the Peak, so it's just kind of like... Like, it's inevitability, you know? Eventually, he's going to come down, and he's going to run out of cards. And he does run out of cards, so at this point, I'm just like, right, now I just need to start getting rid of stuff on his side of the field. Because ultimately, he's obviously going to just try and make a big push. So that's where I'm like, right, okay, fuck it. Obosh time. 
That should be the push that I need. So I can't really afford to swing in because he could just multi-block into the Terror of the Peaks and then just start swinging at me and at that point I'd be dead. So I have to, I mean, I have to hold back a little bit here. Uh, but I mean, that, that should be fairly obvious to anybody. The, um, the spike field hazard kind of coming in clutch here. Like, it's... The amount of times the spike field hazard just, like, comes up for something relevant is really, really good. Hope that card remains, like, just good in general going forward. But there we go. See, there's... Terror of the Peaks. That's the thing. Like, it, it managed to survive, and then he ain't surviving because of it. Here we go. So, another hand that had the Gen Salt Maiden, but we had to mull that one. Because, ultimately, the rest of the hand was just completely unusable. Which does kind of go against, like, if you get ultimatum, just keep it, but it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> it's possible that like, that hand would have been keepable, but, you know, you'd have to have, like, the next few draws would have to be, like, specifically really good. So up against Rakdos again, uh, except this version of Rakdos is very, very odd. Like, it's, like, artifact Rakdos, but, like, Ugin, I, I, I don't get it, honestly, but... He, he tried. <laughs> we'll give him that. Pretty sure he almost beats me, actually. So, again, look, this is pretty good, actually, though, because we got the, um, we got the Cultivate, and then we also got Beanstalk Giant, so we are just like, right, fire out these lands ASAP before he's doing anything. Get that out of the way, and then I can just start playing the game whatever way I want. Although I think that probably everybody would have went down that kind of, that route, because ultimately, like, there's no setting up to be done. I guess you could just go down the Terror of the Peaks route, but I'd rather, it's much, it's more beneficial to be able to go, like, Terror of the Peaks and then something else in the same turn when their opponent's, like, tapped out. That's, like, that's way more ideal. So you could have went down that route, but ultimately, playing against Rakdos, I'm like, ugh best to just do what I know is good and get the lands out the deck ASAP. Ramp, 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 then play the Terror of the Peaks. And then also, like, theoretically, I can go, like, Terror into Beanstalk Giant, but I need a lot of mana for that, so that's probably not happening. But Terror into, like, you know, you flash and Brazen Bar or whatever, that's totally doable, so that's kind of what I was thinking here. So we get another Beanstalk Giant. So here we've got the Terror. So instead of playing the um, the Brazen Bar right away, uh, take the Obosh. Simply because I've got the other Terror of the Peaks, so it's like, right, well... Well, there we go, right? So if I'd played the Brazen Borrower, that would be it gone as well. Not that I could have predicted such a thing, but, I mean, it just is what it is kind of thing. But there we go, we've got the, we've got the next Terror. And I'm kind of just being a bit like, ugh, right, obviously I need to play it, but it's fine. So that Maze Mind Tome, this card's really, really good. I feel like this deck could probably actually utilize Maze Mind Tome, like, really, really well. Perhaps, perhaps it would be better than a land, like, maybe take out a few lands now. Admittedly, I sacked the absolute shit out of this guy. <laughs> this is just top deck in the Gen Assault Matum is obviously way too good, as well as it drawing into the next one. So, it just kind of is what it is. The deck just sort of does that sometimes. And that is like one power of the deck. The good news is, though, is that he had to down tick the Ugin so much to get rid of the Terror of the Peaks so I could just kill it with the Bone Crusher Giant. So I really, really high rolled that last turn. Like, that, that kind of really worked out well for me there. And it, was, it sucked to see the Ugin because I was like, Jesus Christ. If I hadn't drawn the, the Genesis Ultimatum, it'd probably just been totally over. Now, at this stage, I do want to start putting damage in, but I don't have a 1-1. One, one. I, I, I don't want to just kill the Solemn Simulacrum. I'm kind of trying to play around it, which is probably... It's probably sort of wrong just doing that. Realistically, you should probably just get rid of it, like, as soon as you can. But I get a pretty good Gen Solemn We get the Henge, and at that point, 
Absolutely game. Totally over. There's no coming back from that. So I'm like, right, play the Obosh. Play, um, like, get the 1-1. The Sadly, we're not able to, like, <laughs> use the other Bone Crusher Giant. That's, that that really sucks. But ultimately, I mean, nothing really has haste or whatever, so it's, it doesn't really matter. Like, it wouldn't... If I, if I attacked him this turn, it wouldn't be taken away a turn from how long he's got until he dies. He dies next turn anyway, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Always, rem always remember that, like... Like, does it really matter if you attack if you have definite game next turn anyway? Like, it's always good if you can, but don't beat yourself up too much if you, like, oh, I didn't get that attack in, could have done more damage. Doesn't really matter, because you see this, like, this field, well, I mean, in this case, it actually did specifically matter, right. Okay, but aside from when they drop the fucking Ugin on you, that's the only time it doesn't matter. So it was annoying, it was annoying, but it's fine, because we've got the next Genesis Ultimatum. <laughs> I think he was just sick of it at this point. I just have so much, uh, just so much card advantage. So it's nice, like, we get the Terror of the Peaks, and I've got so much more mana at this, I'm just, like, firing, so. It, it definitely was game at that stage, but... Yeah, I just hate, like, I'll, I'll say, like, something that's just, like, a nice plat. You're like, oh, don't beat yourself up, you don't attack, because generally you've got game, and then you just drop the fucking nugget on me anyway. Like, what I said still counts. Don't worry. So this hand, again, solid. Really what you're looking for is, like, it, you know, your three colors of mana plus cultivate, and you're good to go. Good to go. Now, up against Gruul, so we're, you know, we're expecting, like, you know, how did the deck do against aggro? Well, honestly, pretty well, especially compared to the, the general, just normal ramp version of the deck, because you have the, you have the, the Lovestruck Beasts, you have the Stomps, you've got the, the Petty Theft, which is all stuff that generally the ramp deck, like, could play, but didn't really get massive amounts of use out of, so, yeah, like, actually felt pretty good here, it, so, at this stage, I was like, I genuinely think it would have been better to actually have played the uh, Terror of the Peaks in this particular matchup, because ultimately, he's probably not going to be able to out it if he's, so say he plays like a guy that's like two mana, it's unlikely that he would have like a follow-up that could have killed the Terror of the Peaks, so ultimately, I think playing the Terror of the Peaks was the better option, but it's not so big a deal. I think it would have been better to play that instead of the Cultivate last turn, however, because I'd have had the Terror of the Peaks on board, I could have played like, the Bone Crusher Giant, just hit and face. I, it would have been game this turn had I played Terror of the Peaks last turn, so, you know, depending on your matchup, don't necessarily just ramp, ramp, ramp every single turn. But, I mean, that, that was game anyway, but it could have been more game So this hand, I'm, <laughs> we keep it, but it is a little bit of a gamble, but the, 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 the three colors of mana, plus the Genesis Ultimatums, plus the Cultivate was just swaying me too hard, honestly. Now, up against Mono Red, which is admittedly, like, after he started playing this, I'm just like, oh god. Luckily, it was double this instead of double Fervent Champion, which would obviously be far, far worse. So realistically, we're just like, right, can we hold off just a number of turns to get this Genesis Ultimatum out? And ultimately, yeah, we do manage to do it. Um, because we, we get, like, just, just, un just enough interruption. <laughs> This is me just uh, working out what lands it is that I need. It's, all, it's always blue. Like, just the, the three blue is, like, the biggest issue. So that's, like, a fair amount of damage on board. And you are kind of putting, like, a shitty position. So he kind of made my position easier here by... <laughs> because I would probably have bounced the, the Rimrock Knight. But ultimately, we managed to get there. Um... 
And then we also got that. We've still killed the Rem Remrock, Remrock Knight, so we're like totally fine now. It's crazy, like that coming back from that. Even with the Torbrin, it's like it can't even do anything anymore. Which is just the power of like what this deck can do. Just so much flexibility, and you just have like a ex super explosive top end. It's just kind of crazy, to be honest. So then we play the next Genesis Ultimatum, and uh, honestly, I'm shocked that he hasn't quit at this stage. Like, like I'd, I'd probably quit on the first Genesis Ultimatum, honestly, because these uh, Beanstalk Giants are unoutable. Essentially, I mean, I guess you can like make them like they can't block, but you have to rely on that. So at this point, he's just kind of like swinging the game, like. Even have an Ember Cleave, like it just doesn't matter. Uh, the bone, the the Beanstalk Giant was just so big that the, <laughs> the Bone Crusher Giant with an Ember Cleave can't even get over it. It's crazy. That's the ideal scenario. That's what you want. So we're on the last game of the video. I'm pretty sure this is against it is against Golgari, and uh, honestly, I think Golgari is really good this particular meta, but. Like, we just kind of trounce them again, like, just going down the the usual paths. The really good, the, the, the specifically good thing was here is we got the two Bone Crusher Giant and it just wants to play two mana dorks that are both Bone Crusherable. That felt particularly good. And that obviously, like, slowed him down so much to the point where we could still play our ramp cards. Like, that worked out so well for us. To the point where, like, the Pelucanos just doesn't even matter. And then it's just straight in a Gen Solomium. That's crazy, like, this is, like, absolute perfect curve, like, even if he had the Mana Dorks available, I don't even think it would have mattered, honestly, I don't really, what much more could he have done at this, like, he could have played another 2 drop or something, it just wouldn't have mattered. So, that semi-sucked, I guess, but then I was just like, well, it doesn't matter, I'll just play Terror of the Peaks, play a Bone Crusher Giant and then get my, my Genesis Ultimatum back. Like, it was just, it's perfect. Like, this was ab an absolutely perfect game. Now, I guess he does the technically right thing, and, you know, he kills the Terror of the Peaks with Pelucanos, but it's just not enough at this stage, honestly. Like, it's just... <laughs> there we go. Although, that was a particularly low-impact um, Genesis Ultimatum, admittedly. But the logic now is just beat him down with Bone Crusher Giants. Uh, Beanstalk Giants, rather. Or Bone Crusher Giants as well, to be honest. So at this point, I was checking the little help, like the little helper thing to see if I had any more basics in deck. I genuinely wasn't, wasn't sure, but uh, I'm also not really too fussed if he blocked the Pelucanos in because then it's like right, cool. Then the Pelucanos is like being more dealt with. So I think he expected me to. Also, I respect the fuck that this guy's playing Clack Bridge Troll. Like patrician to your choice. Not gonna lie, but it's kind of funny because he can swing in with the Clack Bridge, but then it's like. Well, I mean, I just only, I'm only trading one beast into it. Like, I need to block two guys in it, sure, but only one of them dies, so it's like fuck it. I'll take that trade any day. That was like good value for me. He certainly put up like an amount of a fight. Like, this isn't explicitly over for him, but it's also not looking too great, especially when he's playing like Golgari Ramp, right? But. What's the top end? Like, it's just... <laughs> it's not really getting anything out of the ramp. Like, I'm playing ramp, and my ramp is paying off into something, bro. So, so don't go to Beanstalk Giants, and I'm like, fuck this, end the game now. And that should be the end, because uh, there ain't much he can do now. Ain't anything. Even through a 12-12 Pelucranos, like, it just doesn't matter, because we just bounce it to hand and swing in. So this is kind of odd because I I don't know why I didn't swing in. I, I don't know why I didn't bounce it with the um, with the brazen borrow. To be honest, that seems like a kind of obvious choice. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that video. I enjoyed making it. 
I enjoyed uh, I'm kind of I, I actually really like this new format I, I kind of prefer it to be honest the recording process is just so much less stressful but I uh, hopefully you enjoyed that video and hopefully you enjoy it enough to sub tune in next time and uh, just gotta leave it there catch you guys in the next one